We're back with uh, Phil Blomberg, Chairman, CEO of Blomberg Capital. Uh, he's got the last word. He's been our guest host for the last uh, hour or so. Phil, uh, John Licata, a couple of minutes ago, was talking about, uh, I guess, uh, fairly direct investment uh, ideas, uh, oil and energy. Yeah. Your take is uh, there's an alternative way to, to go around this, to, to look yes. at it. And I, exactly I how? Explain. I agree with John. The yeah. servicers on directly on the, on the wellheads are going to be a good place to be. But... I also, from a real estate perspective, have to look at how we hedge against just what we said, the energy costs. Right. There are ways to do it which are indirect through derivatives. And I think, by the way, over the course of the next few years, we're going to see derivative ETFs moving up because of this. In our case, we go right into the market. So we will have a presence in Brazil, in the Middle East, and in Texas markets where energy costs, at least over the interim, we expect to be going what up. What kind of presence, though? Uh, we'll have office buildings. We will develop in Brazil okay. or and in the Gulf, and we'll be buying existing assets Same in Houston. Same way we did in Houston, right? Same way we did in Houston. It, it paid off well. The landscape changing, Phil. I mean, we've seen mm. energy derivatives, commodity mm. derivatives more broadly in the crosshairs by the regulators, increased oversight there. Is that going to crimp volumes? Are you concerned about that? I have a sense that, that the financial markets will find a way to deal with regulation, as they always have in an inventive way. I think the issue is really the, how that capital is deployed. If the asset structure is heavily debt, there's no derivative that's safe. If the asset structure is you don't go naked and you're not heavily debt, then I think derivatives are great investments. And certainly they proxy for the kinds of inflation we expect to see. Yeah. I'm curious about what you think about this region because you've been spending a bit of time doing yeah. a road show. When you look at the property prices, which is a hot topic mm -hmm. in this corridor, yeah. Do the, does the pricing look inflated to you? Would you be very wary about the risk around property investments across Asia? Well, it's market to market. Um, mm. I would say very inflated in India, where land costs drive an abnormal um, cost of development and where you just don't see the returns. Places like Singapore are a little different. They're highly growth constrained. They're very good real estate markets, and they maintain demand. So market to market, we just talked about China. Yes, it may be hitting a new bubble, and uh, mm. central government may be able to soften the impact, but it is clearly through the roof. So I think it's market to market, and a great deal of it depends on the structure of that what about market's buying. China, though, Phil, because I read one comment that uh, likened uh, China's uh, real estate markets to um, the U.S. market pre-subprime, and it's a ticking time bomb. I think it is a ticking time bomb. I think the Chinese are aware of it, and I think you're right. The prices are very lofty in China. And they seem to be, um, there seems to be a buying frenzy. I have some concerns that China's real estate market will go through what we did. And I think the one thing when we talk about China, and I think it is a formidable force, but we never talk about what happens as you see price inflation internal to China, as you see salary demands up, as you see booms and busts. We've only seen China in a very straight, lineal positive. It's going to be interesting to see how it deals with some crises internally. Okay, well, we'd love to keep on chatting with you. It's been fantastic having yes. you here around the set this morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Philip Blumberg here on Squawk Walk.